Palace Las Vegas is our venue. Live big time boxing. It's the third meeting of Riddick Bow and Evander Holyfield. No title on the line here at Caesars Palace, but it is the fight for the People's Heavyweight Championship. 12 rounds of boxing, two men's careers on the line. Inside Riddick Bow's dressing room here, Bow, the WBO World Heavyweight Champion, but that title not up for grabs here tonight. This is about prestige. Uh, against this man, Evander Holyfield. Twice he's won versions of the World Heavyweight Crown, once he was undisputed king. And in terms of popularity and status, if he can win here tonight, his achievement will surpass anything, surely, that he won in terms of championship belts this far in his glittering career. At the age of 33, an enormous test for him, but he has proved us wrong time and time again, and he sounded in the build-up to this one supremely confident. Watching here with us, Gary Mason and Barry McGuigan and the celebrities at ringside in droves here tonight. This fight truly has captured the imagination of the fight going public in Las Vegas. It's a complete sellout, much in contrast incidentally to the promotion that was cancelled down the road. Martin Lawrence, John The tale of the tape. Bo, five years younger, two and a half inches taller than Evander Holyfield, and almost two stone heavier. But both these men at what you would consider their best fighting weight for this fight tonight. And look out for Bo's long reach and that powerful, rasping left jab. It's a very potent weapon. Holyfield somehow got to get inside it to launch his attacks. The re career record so far. Bo, 39 fights, 37 victories, 31 by knockout, and just one defeat. For Evander Holyfield, 31 victories in 33, 22 by knockout, and only two defeats for Evander Holyfield. One was to this man, Riddick Bow. The bookmakers have no doubts in Las Vegas. They make Bow a three to one on favorite. Evander Holyfield is five to two underdog, and there's not much money around for a draw. And you wouldn't be surprised about that when you consider how these two have teed off on each other before now. Our commentators, at ringside for this big fight special, Glenn McCrory and Ian Dow. Well, at the moment here, thank you very much indeed, Paul. Several celebrities being introduced and right on cue. Britain's Lennox Lewis, who believes now that he will fight the winner of Bo against Holyfield. Has to be said, he didn't get the most uproarious reaction from the American crowd. He may, at some point in the future, put those boos right back down their throats, as he did really against Tommy Morrison. That was a good performance. All kinds of stars are here being introduced from the ring. Jack Nicholson is here, I've seen already. Uh, Bruce Willis, the star of the Die Hard films. Demi Moore, James Garner, Dennis Hopper, Carl Lewis, the great Olympian. Sugar Ray Leonard has been introduced. It's a really star-spangled crowd. There is Jack Nicholson, big boxing fan. Great sense of excitement, and you can't really beat these big fight nights like this open air at Caesars Palace. I have to say, I wish we weren't open air because it is freezing. <laughs> it is, it's very cold here. We await now the entrance of the fighters. We have seen already uh, some shots backstage of Evander Holyfield, who looked in absolutely magnificent condition. He has trained exceptionally hard for this fight he won't be short of conditioning but he is 33 has he had too many hard fights we'll soon know and that is where we are caesar's palace this has been the scene of so many wonderful nights in boxing down the years i've been coming here for 15 years or so now to fights off and on and uh, a lot of the battles here have been quite memorable and we hope that this will be another of them remember the last time uh, Holyfield and Bo fought here a couple of years ago the paraglider dropped in which reminds me I wonder where James Miller is tonight has anyone checked nowhere around here I hope <laughs> I think I think for the fight after uh, Bo Holyfield the big fight here they, they locked him in prison for the night to make sure that he wasn't going to cause any more interruptions. We're laughing about it. It wasn't funny at That's all. Right. Somebody it's could have been very seriously hurt. It was a very dangerous thing he did. 
there is the tail of the tape Holyfield five years older at 33 Bo the taller man and with a reach advantage as well Bo look at the weight differential there 17 stone 2 that is against 15 stone 3 nearly 2 stones and uh, Bo as you can see at the bottom with the 81 inch reach but Holyfield in both of the previous fights has shown that he can go along with Bo the first fight was a terrific one Bo did win it and won it really quite emphatically on in the end but it was a, a marvelous spectacle the second fight a much smarter slicker Holyfield with a better strategy managed to take it away from Bo who was some way below his best and the feeling was at the time that Bo had kind of eaten his way out of the title that's right it was said that he wasn't in the, the best shape and that's why he lost it but it'd be interesting to see that the tactics of these fighters both trainers have mentioned how they think their fighters or what they plan their fighters to do in this fight or they expect him to be an attacking fighter coming behind the jab but trying to put the pressure on Holyfield I think Holyfield is going to be looking to to use his boxing skills try and be in and out and just not let Bo get set keep getting him from angles and changing the fight around a little bit big crowd here a lot of them have paid for their tickets probably at the last moment Tyson fight of course down the road at the MGM off the ticket sales there had been very very slow this was always going to be the winner I think on the live gate front and it's nearly full it holds about 15,000 the crowd looks well about a thousand short of that to me Glenn McCrory and I have a wonderful pitch right at ringside we are almost within touching distance of Riddick Bowe's corner that is the rule book for this fight the three knockdown rule is in effect and a standing eight count will not be in effect the fighters can be saved by the bell only in the last round and the usual 10 point must scoring system so much drama when these two have met before the 1992 and 1993 battles were both voted fights of the year and indeed Evander Holyfield has figured in no fewer than four separate fights of the year his fights with uh, Mike Dokes and Dwight Carwey also winning that accolade. I mean, when you talk about Evander Holyfield, um, if anyone deserved the moniker, the real deal, it's him. That's right, and that's why you can never write a fighter of Evander Holyfield's caliber off, because he's, he's shown himself over the last 10, 12 years to be such a competitor, such a fierce warrior, and he always gives nothing but the very best of himself, and I'm sure you can depend on that again tonight playing at Caesars Palace apart from Bowen Holyfield by the way at the moment are the Moody Blues and um, in these temperatures it does feel like forever autumn I must say <laughs> across the road there the Flamingo all the um, famous hotel casinos that line the strip here which is where Caesars Palace is a massive complex it's got about 38 restaurants and we are out at the back of the casino in the huge parking lot where this sports arena is permanently set up I think they even once here had a Grand Prix Formula One Grand Prix several years ago that's how big the area is the MGM which was due to stage the Tyson fight about half a mile away down the strip as we still await the entrance of the gladiators here and gladiators I think is the right word uh, for Riddick Bow and Evander Holyfield two gentlemen they've acted quite perfectly in the build-up they've become friends in fact Holyfield went to Riddick Bowe's birthday party you know Glenn <laughs> quite recently yes yeah, good job they didn't have a fight there isn't it but they were it's been remarkable to see you know that they've been so much respect they've they've got for each other they've been so pleasant and you know, everything's gone very well but I think that's down to the fact that they've really you know, opened their souls out to each other in the ring they've really got that mutual respect that two fighters who shared so many hard rounds together can only have not to mention the fact that they've now made 60 million dollars out of these three fights between them well that's a good reason to be a friend with anybody isn't it mm, made a lot of money together but I think that's not going to dilute anything you're going to see in the ring here in fact Riddick Bo was saying that Holyfield is one of the finest human beings in the world but it don't mean I won't knock him out this is business we're about to witness here with Magic Johnson, one of the basketball stars. The whole host of celebrities here. Well, 
Well, the delay, as ever, is, of course, to meet with TV schedules. Backstage somewhere, Riddick Bowe and Evander Holyfield just going through their final preparations and getting themselves mentally right, developing the tunnel vision. I know Riddick Bowe tries not to think about the fight, he says. He thinks about his children when he's in the dressing room. He said it, it relaxes him. I don't think about the guy I'm going to fight. Interesting. Yes, it is. I think all fighters have different ways of putting you're know, getting their mind into gear some need to really hype themselves up really get you know, in that battle mode and other fighters need to relax because they need to calm themselves down a bit to get the best out of themselves so all fighters are very different in that aspect Holyfield says he gets nervous he visualizes things I said he says he looks right into his opponent's eyes before the fight to see if the other fellow's confident and to let him know that he's in trouble Seems like a good ploy. <laughs> Planet Hollywood and the Mirage there in the distance. That's where they have the exploding volcanoes and the white tigers. If you're ever on a tourist trip to this ever-growing town. A hundred thousand people descend on Las Vegas every weekend just to gamble. And obviously that figure is pumped up an awful lot on big fight nights if you're wondering why the big fights are always in places like Atlantic City and Las Vegas the reason is that they pay or the hotel casinos pay a big site fee to the promoters and they get it back with uh, the huge drop as they call it in the casinos I think they made 31 million dollars in the casino on the night Tyson fought Spinks back in 1988 which just shows there is the money in it if the fight is big enough now here comes Evander Holyfield. This is the man they call the real deal. Holyfield now 33 years of age. A deeply religious man these days. His favorite book is the Bible. His favorite film, The Ten Commandments. But a decent, dignified ambassador for his sport. A revered fighter now who probably made his name in many ways on the night he lost to Bo. Before that, they kind of regarded him as a proud man and a blown-up cruiserweight who'd lose to the first decent heavyweight he met. He did lose to Bo, but how he covered himself in glory that night and just to add to the reputation, he fought Bo again and this time beat him on points with a superior strategy. Yes, he's always been a, as well as a superbly physical, a superbly conditioned athlete. He's always been a thinking fighter as well, and he's he's got some remarkable assets. He's a, a great champion and a, a wonderful warrior. The two fighters, by the way, wanted to come in together, but then Holyfield said he wanted to make his entrance to his favorite gospel music, and Bo then preferred his own entrance, so that's why Holyfield has now come in first. Usually, of course, it's the challenger. We don't have a challenger and a champion here. They are contesting what they're calling the People's Heavyweight Championship. Not too many arguments, I don't think, that these two are the best two heavyweights of this decade so far. And here comes Big Daddy Riddick Bowe. He has his children there emblazoned on his gown. A, a big family man. That's smart, isn't it? Five children he has. I guess he's going to need a bigger gown if he keeps going. And there in front of him, there in the glasses, that's Eddie Futch. The 84-year-old trainer, a remarkable man who has handled 19 world champions in his time. And Bo, well, he used to have the reputation of being a bit of a clown as well as a good fighter. He's tended to drop that side of things a wee bit more but he looks in terrific shape as well and he's his lightest for three years here that's right and i think that tells a story in itself he in the second hollywood field fight he blew up and weighed a bit people said he hadn't taken it seriously and a lot of people said a mark of how he's ended this fight will be his weight and he was light for this one so it looks as if he's done all the preparations he knows he'll have to do in a fight with evander holyfield who's beaten a whole list of decent class heavyweights like Holyfield himself of course 
Pink Long Thomas Burt Cooper Tyrell Biggs Bruce Seldon the current WBA champion and in his last two fights he's looked very impressive particularly against Jorge Gonzalez the Cuban who some very good judges thought might beat Bo he came nowhere close to doing so of course Herbie Hyde was another recent Riddick Bo victim but I think Hyde more than anything was just too small Holyfield is of an equal size to Herbie Hyde but is a different proposition as he's proved before yes but one of the things that was shown in the Hyde fight was Hyde was able to hit ball he did land with some fairly decent shots in the in the first few rounds so here comes Riddick Bow. Eddie Futch there, Mackie Schust in the conditioner is somewhere there as well. Relaxed, nice man, Riddick Bow, 28 years of age, from New York, against Holyfield from Atlanta, Georgia. He's got the children on the front and he's got his wife on the back. <laughs> and she's sitting at ringside, Judy few feet away from us the third then of this great American trilogy reminiscent of the great three fight series of the past like Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier and Tony Zale and Rocky Graziano the Leonard Duran series and one thinks two of the uh, Floyd Patterson and Gamar Johansson fights they were rather shorter Ali Norton and so on down the years but if this one is even half as good as the first couple have been well we're in for something very very appetizing indeed ladies and gentlemen Spencer promotions and your undisputed undefeated king of beers Budweiser this buds for you in association with main events monitor present Bo Holyfield 3, the final chapter. 12 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division with the victor to be recognized as the best in the world. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Dr. James Nave, Commissioners Nat Carasali, Luther Mack, Dr. Elias Ghanem, and Crispin Rivera, Executive Director Mark Ratner, Physicians at Ringside, Dr. Flip Homansky, Dr. Robert Hoy and Dr. James Wishgame. The timekeepers are Al Bicek and J James Gavin. Your three judges scoring this bout on a 10-point must system will be Chuck Jamba, Bill Graham, and Jerry Roth. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Joe Cortez. And now, for the thousands in attendance here in Las Vegas and the millions watching around the world, let's join together and share with pride this moment in heavyweight history. Ladies and gentlemen, from the site where legends are made, Caesar's Palace, uh, let's get Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold trimmed with black and weighing 213 pounds. In 1984, he captured an Olympic bronze medal. Then, as a professional, he became the undisputed cruiserweight world champion. He then moved to the heavyweight division, winning that title two times. His professional record now stands at 31 victories, 22 by knockout, with only two defeats. Tonight, he again displays his courage by facing for the third time the toughest opponent of his career. Ladies and gentlemen, from Atlanta, Georgia, introducing the warrior, the three-time world champion and former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Evander Real Real. And his opponent, of 
across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing white trimmed in red and weighing 240 pounds. In 1988, he came home to the streets of Brooklyn with an Olympic silver medal. After turning professional, he fought his way to the World Heavyweight Championship in 1992. And in his third title defense, he suffered the first and only loss of his career. Tonight, he plans on reversing that single blemish on his record. A record which now stands at 37 victories, 31 by knockout with that one defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brooklyn, New York, a two-time world champion, former undisputed, and current WBO heavyweight champion of the world, Riddick, Big Daddy So, the introductions and what introductions are over. All right, Joe gentlemen. Cortez calls him to center ring. We went over the rules in a dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Obey my command at all time. Give me good sportsmanlike conduct. Understood? All right, shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Where's Lorenzo? Right here. Right there. They've already shared 72 minutes of ring action, these two. Neither of them have ever been stopped. The next round you see between them, this one coming up, will be the 25th that they have contested. In November 92, it was Bo. In November 93, it was Holyfield. Will it be another November to remember? And what result in 95? Holyfield, as always, stoical, stone-faced. Bo, who looks like he's just turning up to do some supermarket shopping sometimes when he gets in the ring but it's different when they start it's Bo Holyfield three can Holyfield turn back the clock having looked like he might be a fading force over the last couple of years notwithstanding his comeback win over Ray Mercer which was hard work for him and why do we have a delay now I wonder well they're just making sure that the ropes are at the right tension one of the uh, belts holding them in place has been taken away and we're all set to go here on this chilly night at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas Holyfield they touch gloves with his back to you and in the gold trunks the strategy will be interesting will Holyfield try the same gung-ho approach in, that he did in the first fight even against a man weighing two stones more and it proved costly for him or will he try that clever ploy that he did in the second fight never allowing Bo to really get set what do you think Glenn? yes you would feel that he, he must really adopt the, the second option he must try and make himself a moving target he must be in and out very elusive it was interesting to hear him predict Holyfield, though, that he would knock Bo out here. And he's not a man given to easy, cheap, glib remarks like that. If he says something like that, that is what he thinks. Looks sharp, Holyfield, at the start here. Holyfield hasn't really been a, a big puncher in the heavyweights. Good lateral movement so far from Holyfield. Just changing the angle. Making sure he's not there for Bo to start letting those heavy right hands go. Bo has been told by Eddie Futch to use the jab and then he says that everything will flow off that. They know each other so well of course now. Getting off the, the quicker as we thought he would. Holyfield, who's trained long and hard for this, I must say, against Michael Moura when he lost the title, he looked so flat that he did look like a shot fighter. But he's come back from that with a win over Mercer. Bo unleashes for the first time, Holyfield coming back with a left hook and uppercut. 
Holy could have certainly been the busier in this first round. Feel that ball will want to draw Holyfield in. Boy is a, is a very good fighter inside, has a wonderful uppercut. And he'll be wanting to, to control with the jab and then bring it in so he can use his strength and power in close. Bo was talking to Holyfield as they worked in close there, I noticed. Holyfield's working well with the jab so far. Heads seem to come close together there. Bit of a grimace from Holyfield. Last 10 seconds of the round. Good right hand from Holyfield over the top. He looks much more like the old Evander Holyfield early on here, but this, of course, is very much the preliminary skirmishing. Holyfield's round. Welcome back. They are already working away at the left eye of Riddick Bow with the end as well. Holyfield on mark. There's just seemed to be a clash of heads that may have caused that. That was a good round for Holyfield, the, flight, the fight plan was perfect there that's how he needs to fight this fight in and out and just being first with the jab here we go with round two Holyfield of course on the right of your picture much the smaller man what a warrior he's been and finding though with that jab very very well indeed so focused for this fight and had a long chat with him in his uh, hotel suite the other day and he's definitely up for it and sees this as a chance to really re-establish himself yes he seems pretty confident really nobody knows Bo quite like Holyfield does so you'd think that you know, he suspects he can do something in this fight Tentative start from Bo, who, despite being 17 stone two, his lightest for three years, still looks a little bit fleshy around the waist, but that's the way with him. Holyfield, so much the athlete, probably and arguably the best conditioned heavyweight of all time. We're just starting to use the jab a little bit. It looks as if he's, he's trying to load up for that right hand. It looks sharp, but Holyfield has just managed to avoid it so far. Bo's not using his jab at all, is he? He's starting to use it a little more than he was. He's very quiet in the first round, but he's just starting to pull it out more and more. Holyfield looking for the fast right-hand counter, and Bo managing to avoid it. Might have been interesting how that landed. No doubt that Bo is the man with more power. Holyfield's job is to make sure he doesn't unleash it too often. Good fighting inside there from Bo. Some of those landing on the gloves with the left hook didn't. To the side of the head of Holyfield. Probably Bo's most eye-catching punch so far. Yes, they're both working well inside. Bo also has a very good uppercut that he throws. Yes, it was a devastating one of those that started the trouble for Holyfield in the 10th round, that memorable 10th round of the first fight. Good right hand from Holyfield. Holyfield coming in closer and closer. Again, decent body punches from Bo inside. But both of them scoring in these exchanges and Holyfield so busy big right hand the bell goes to end the round and Holyfield wants to fight on well all the pre-fight friendship was over there Holyfield really got steamed up welcome back this is this interlude right at the end of the last round the bell had gone here that's right and Holyfield just seemed to get through that left hook and then it started there was some talk before the fight, Holyfield, they touch gloves again now. Holyfield complaining that Bo often used foul tactics. And he was worried about him always wanting to get the last punch in at the end of rounds, even if the bell had already gone. And I wonder if that was what he felt had happened there. And I think he did. And he decided to give Bo some back. 
Now that might heat things up a bit. Third round. In the Holyfield corner there, Tommy Brooks was really bellowing at him. I think they were very unhappy that he, he stopped his tactics and decided to have a fight with Paul. Bo got it with a good right cross there, but Holyfield came back with one of his own. This shows signs that it could boil up into another very, very good fight between these two. Very good up a foot there from Bo. That's his good punch inside. Holyfield guarding against that with his gloves held just below his chin as they worked inside. And again, Bo makes it work for him, though. Just beginning to cuff Holyfield around a bit inside. Making his strength tell. And again, the jolting right uppercut. Holyfield finds one of his own, though. The crowd respond to that, too. Oh, and look at this. Body and head punches from Holyfield. Back comes Bo again. Now they're letting the punches fly. Rising excitement here about what is evolving, possibly. Yes, and this one's starting to look more and more like their first encounter. Holyfield has been caught by several right uppercuts, couple of body shots as well. And keep your punches up, says the referee to Bo. There's certainly some rough stuff going on inside there, all right. It's quite hard to see how often Bo is actually landing with that uppercut. Holyfield's gloves do protect his chin. Some of them are hitting the gloves. Some of them are getting through. Yes, some of them are getting through. He's working well inside, Bo. For a big man with long arms, he does get them short punches going. Tough round to score with him working in so close like this and a lot catching the arms and gloves. But the impression is that Bo has been a lot busier. But there goes Holyfield with that trademark right hand of his. In over the top. Last quarter of a minute of round three. And this has been a grueling round of infighting. It's a grueling round which Boy is just getting the better of. Probably Riddick Bowes round that, I would think, for his work, mainly with the uppercuts as they worked inside. Yes, he was content just to let Holyfield push forward and lean on him, just so he could try and get the leverage for his little cluster of punches inside. And they worked well. He just seemed to get through with the cleaner shots, especially the, the right uppercut, which is a good punch. You see it worked perfectly there. Holyfield just using that same punch to good effect himself. Such tough work, but Bo, after a pretty slow start, a lot busier now. Yes, he's picked it up. He was very calm at the beginning of the fight, and I think you know, he hadn't gotten himself really psyched up. But he certainly, this is a lot better now. There's Glenn McCrory's scorecard so far. And he has Bo up by one round at this stage. Round four. Oh, great right hand from Bo there on the counter. Sharp and fast, but Holyfield's left hook was an eye catcher too. And the right to the body, a good shot. Holyfield steps it up. Bo in a spot of trouble for a moment. Holyfield certainly got the better of that exchange and it looked as if Bo was just looking to grab for a second. You see, this is a totally different Evander Holyfield from the man we saw look so awful, really, against Michael Mora on the night he lost the title. He looked there like a finished fighter, but this is much more like the old Holyfield. He said that night, to be fair to him, that he was carrying a bad shoulder injury. Great start to the round by Holyfield who probably realised he lost that last round on the scorecards and came straight out to re-establish himself. Just looking to try and tie Bo up inside. He doesn't want him to use them free hands inside there. The question has to be asked, though, about Holyfield. After so many hard and gruelling fights down the years, 
can he go through another 12 rounds in what might develop into a bruising kind of war is it still there for him still early in the fight remember Holyfield not working inside, looking to try and tie the hands up of Bull. You'd think really this infighting would be in favour of Bo, where he can use his uppercut and he's two stone heavier. That's right, the strength and the size of Bull has got to have a, an effect on Holyfield. I know he's in tremendous condition, but really this is not the sort of fight that he, he has to fight. Holyfield has looked more impressive on the outside. Listen, he's doing very little in this run. All of a sudden, he just looks a, a little jaded. He's starting to breathe heavier as well, Holyfield. Significantly. Doesn't look as sharp as he did in that first round. Are these bad signs? Contesting a so-called People's Heavyweight Championship. It's been recognized by New York State as for being the heavyweight championship of the world. Good right to the body and left to the head from Holyfield, who started the round well and is now trying to end it well, too. Welcome back to Caesars Palace. Evander Holyfield, you just saw a little glimpse of his rally at the start of the round and then at the end. He had Bo in a spot of bother early on. Yes, he started the round well and he, he finished trying to be aggressive, but in the middle of the round he did very little and looked quite jaded and quite tired and was not looking to work inside. Round five. One thing about the old Holyfield is he could fight for three minutes of a round, maintain intense pressure. But he was starting to breathe heavily, maybe ominously for him in that last round. Again standing toe to toe and wanting to trade. A little bit of a nick underneath the right eye of Holyfield. Doesn't look anything much. Bo has won his last two fights in the sixth round. Ooh, impressive stuff from Bo. That right uppercut of his again. Yes, good work inside from Bo. I'm not sure why Holyfield is content to stand in close like this when he's not working. There's an impression at the moment that Bo is beginning to wear Holyfield down. Again, he, take a, he took a really deep gulp of air there, Holyfield. Almost like he was coming up for air. He looks in some trouble to me at this stage. He does. He looks unusually tired. It's still very early in the fight, and he's taking... Oh, big gas. low blow from Bo. Massive right hand, very low, and one point off. And quite right, too. Quite right, too. Time out for Evander Holyfield to recover from that. But he looks in desperate straits to me, Holyfield, really. He's breathing so heavily. There doesn't seem to be anything there. That's right, he just didn't seem to have that spark. Very similar to how he was in the Moura fight when he couldn't lift the pace. And in his last round and a half, he's looked very similar to that. There's a troubled look on Holyfield's face. One that I've rarely seen before. A body shot seemed to hurt him as well. He skips back and he's under more pressure. Another one seemed to go low. Bo starting to tee off on him now. Oh, and that was low too from Bo. He's landed about three low blows. He's had one point in time. Did that look low too? And Joe Cortez does nothing. Well, Holyfield probably deserved another respite for one of those low blows, I felt. Yes, you feel... Holyfield is going to need all his courage and all his experience here because he does look in some distress. Bo seems on the verge of victory. Holyfield bravely trying to find something, maybe something from the past. A 
again drops his arms and looks a weary fighter he looks like he's running on empty Evander Holyfield and even this proud proud man who's somehow managed to prevail in so many fights surely he can't turn this around from this kind of position or can he just when you say that you write this guy off at your peril but he's in trouble Holyfield welcome back there is considerable concern by the look of it in the corner of Evander Holyfield Don Turner and Tommy Brooks and the doctors are taking a look at him as well as well they might do he there's something wrong isn't there there is the referee was there throughout that round having a look what was happening in the Holyfield corner I think there is some concern sixth round Bo beat Herbie Hyde in the sixth round he beat Jorge Gonzalez in the sixth round in his last two fights will he do the same to Holyfield and look at this from Holyfield just when you think this man oh he's got him with a left hook that's extraordinary Holyfield left hook and both in desperate trouble. He might not get up, he might not make it. Somehow he does, he's blinking. What a fighter this Evander Holyfield is. Bo is all over the place. There's a long time to go in the round. The punches are ramming home. And Holyfield, from the very brink of defeat, seems now to be on the verge of victory. If only he can now drive home the punches and make it count. Bo's head is clearing, he pokes out jabs, he's fighting on instinct, somehow trying to survive the crisis. Every second is vital for him in this situation. Yes, but you still feel Bo is hurt, he can't move his legs, he's stuck in the corner. Unbelievable stuff from Evander Holyfield, who looked a completely spent force until that left hook. Well, what is it with these two? There's always something happening when Bo and Holyfield get in the ring together. And Holyfield hasn't really pursued his advantage that he had there. I would have thought he would have put more pressure on Bo at that point. Now Bo comes back. He looks better now, Bo, and now Holyfield has to cover up. Looks punched out for the moment after the big start of the round. He just can't fight for three minutes of the round Holyfield not like he used to that's the way it looks yes you feel that he's he's biding this time he's trying to get all the strength he can for each big flurry of punches and put as much into it as he can he really went for broke with that left hook he set himself and he let it fly and it worked for him well astonishing stuff here as both men look very tired now before starting to get his jab working again but it's a real twist in the plot and maybe it's not the formality for Bo that it was beginning to look things have turned around a little bit holy Bo still looks so labored in his movements he looks like he's trying to move through treacle yes there's no spring there at all you just see he's really setting his legs to try and put as much into as few punches as he can Has the knockdown taken a lot out of Bo too? Now Holyfield makes the jab work for him. It's already been another memorable battle. What about that? Well, Bo down. And Holyfield showing again his tremendous ability to rescue what seemed to be lost causes. Yes, he did remarkably well because it didn't look as if he was going to beat the count. And throughout that round, he looked desperately tired. He just got a tremendous left hook. He brought it all up right from the soles of his feet. Got so much power into that punch. You see, a wonderful shot, perfectly timed, right on the jaw. And he went down very heavy indeed, Riddick Bohr. Holyfield was just unable to go in then and finish the job for about 20 seconds Bo was purely on instinct wasn't he yes he was there didn't seem to be anything there at all but Holyfield just couldn't finish the job he looked very tired himself Glenn McCrory's scorecard 
has the fight even at the moment. I have Holyfield ahead. I must say, I gave him the first round. There was the point deduction, and the last round was a 10-8 round for Holyfield. I have him in the lead at this point. This is round seven. Glenn has it level. How are the judges scoring it? They're the only ones that count. Round seven, of course, was when the paraglider dropped in last time. You just wonder what's going to happen next with these two, don't you? They do. They both look very, very tight. Both legs look very heavy. And then they suddenly spring into action. Holyfield finds a right uppercut. There really did seem to be no way back for Holyfield about round five. Remember, Bo has had the point deducted for a low blow already. And he's been on the floor. That will affect the scoring of things. Still very little spark in the work of the man at the beginning of this round. I think the knockdown was absolutely vital as well because it seems to have taken something out of Bo, doesn't it? That's right, it just looked as if Bo was ready to get right on top of Holyfield when the knockdown happened, and that's took an awful lot out of Bo. Holyfield certainly picked it up and improved a bit from the place he was, the very, very desperate place he was about 10 minutes ago here. Starting to pick up his work rate again. As he just goes quiet, Holyfield, as if he's reserving his energy to put a, a good combination in. Good left hook as they worked in close from Holyfield. There's that left hook again from Holyfield. Bo's answer is a right hand. But Holyfield may be just the busier. Again the right, and then the left hook again from Holyfield. He's starting to tee off. Yes, they're picking the pace up right at the end of the round. Holyfield just getting the better. I said Holyfield's petrol tank was on dry. Maybe he's had a bit of a refill. But how long will it last? Not a bad seventh round, this, for Holyfield. As the bell goes to end the round, and I wonder, back in London, how Barry McGuigan is assessing this uh, extraordinary fight. Another great one pulling up here, Barry. Absolutely incredible. Incredible fight. I, I said two rounds ago to Gary and uh, Paul here that Holyfield was starting to fall apart. And then he came back with a marvellous left hook and I've been screaming my head off for him since. It's just remarkable. What a fight. I never believed that he had this left in him. But uh, you know, it's very close. In fact, I have got Bo marginally ahead at this stage. But uh, it's, in fact, I have it even, sorry. So it's, uh, it's anybody's fight going into these last quarter of the fight. And I'll tell you, it, it, the way it is at the moment, you know, it's down to who wants it the most. Thank you very much indeed, Barry. Seven rounds gone. Remember, neither man ever stopped. Here comes the eighth round. Holyfield walks out from his corner like a man on a very slow stroll, looking very, very tired, but he's looked like that from about the third round. Good right hand for Bo. This ball really has to start picking it up now. He, he's in danger of letting this fight run away from him. He hurt him with the up left hook again there. Now Holyfield's got guard though. Holyfield was caught in the exchange by the right hand. Now he's the one who's in trouble. Can he get up from that round eight? Joe Cortez counting. He just about makes it. He got up at about 9.2, he can hardly walk, they might stop it here. Holyfield staggers into another fight, this is the end now, it must be stopped, it is stopped. Riddick Bowles is the winner in round eight.
and the brave, brave Evander Holyfield. His challenge ends after another quite remarkable fight here. Holyfield absolutely out on his feet. I don't really believe that Joe Cortez should have let him continue. I really don't. He just stood there and kind of blinked at Cortez, Cortez. and just took two or three more punches. That's right. Cortez asked him to walk forward, and he was unable to walk forward, and then he waved it on. Now they're taking a very close look at Holyfield. And really, you hope that he gets the maximum medical attention. Riddick Bow. now his first thought, being the fella he is, will be to get to Holyfield and to talk to him. They're great friends. And Holyfield paid the price there for mixing it with the bigger and stronger man. They were just in a, a good flurry of punches there when he walked on to that powerful punch from Bo. 58 seconds of round eight. The end of the fight. Bo is the winner. And probably next for him, Lennox Lewis of Great Britain. Bo surviving a real crisis in round six when he was down and looked in desperate trouble. Holyfield happily seems to be okay. There's Rock Newman in there, the former DJ and fiercely independent promoter of Riddick Bow. This is where they decide to slug it out, and where Holyfield walks under the right hand of Bow, and he just falls flat onto his face. He was trying to take Bow out at the time. That's right, he had some success there with a left hook, just wobbled Bo fractionally. That spurred him on with his own punches, but he walked onto the big right hand. He really staggered, though, with the left hook again, he didn't did. he? The, the same worked. interlude. That's right, and this is the finish, where really I didn't think the referee should have let it go on. His legs had gone, he couldn't walk forward when he was asked to do that, and Bo caught him with the right hand, and down he went. And so... Riddick Bowe leads 2-1 in the series, having won the first fight and now the third. But what a crisis he had to endure. There's his wife, Judy, mother of his five children. The real family man. Here at the site where legends are made, Caesar's Palace, a round of applause for two warriors in the heavyweight division. Fight number three was everything we wanted it to be. Referee Joe Cortez calls a halt to the bout. At 58 seconds in the eighth round, the winner by TKO victory, and now reigns supreme as the best heavyweight in the world, Riddick Big Daddy. So Bo wins it amid some extraordinary scenes here and the two gentlemen warriors embrace each other. I wonder if this really is the end for Holyfield now. You feel it really ought to be. What an effort he put up. It wouldn't have been a bad way to go out, but he just looks so tired. For all the conditioning, he looks so tired from the third round. Goal. That's right, he worked so hard for this fight, been in training an awful long time, but he did, he just didn't. It looked as if there was no fuel in the tank. He, his legs after the first couple of rounds where his leg was so heavy and he couldn't move his plan was to be in and out and he couldn't do it and he had to go in there for a fight and unfortunately that was what finished him i'm sure there'll be a lot of talk in the monday morning papers back in britain about a bo lewis fight how would you see that glenn i think obviously lewis from this will get a great deal of confidence he saw in the pro ranks bo had never been on the floor and then he saw that Bo, that Bo can be put on the floor, and I think that'll give Lewis a lot of confidence. Also, when he was hurt, he couldn't do a great deal. His legs were, they were stuck to the canvas, and really, I think if Holyfield had had extra condition or there'd been something left of him, he could have finished the fight there, but there was just nothing there. He just couldn't raise his game when he needed it most. Well, I'll put my head on the block at long range and say I'd fancy Lennox Lewis. I'm sure... 
a lot of people will, would fancy Lennox Lewis after that fight. Bo did remarkably well, he won the fight, he stopped Holyfield, but there just seemed a lot of weaknesses there. Well, another amazing fight here. We are privileged to be here at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas to witness these things. And those of you who've either got up during the middle of the night or stayed up, I hope you thought it was worthwhile. It was, um, it was a different kind of drama from the other fights, but eventful and dramatic it was. Very, very dramatic. Certainly going one way, then the other. But I think we expected them to be a lot more spark with each of them and it wasn't there so uh, at the moment Larry Merchant doing some talking in there we'll try to get an interview of our own with uh, the two fighters in just a moment when they've finished speaking to the American audience who've had to pay nearly $40 for the privilege on pay-per-view. This is the end of the fight again. Left hook rocks bow, and then... Holyfield decides he's hurt his man, carried on, go for broke, and walks on to the right hand. So he was, he was unfortunate. He, he had hurt Bo with his own punch and how effective that punch had been the round before. And then really, the, the second, well, anything would have put him down, the condition he was in. It certainly would have. I think the referee was wrong there. He asked Holyfield to walk forward. I couldn't believe it. Holyfield didn't move from, his, from the spot. And then the referee waved it on. Yes, he was walking really into his doom, wasn't he, as far as the fight was concerned. That's right. It's so easy for us sitting at uh, ringside in the, in the safe seats to be critical like that the referees it must be said have an extraordinarily difficult job but we're all trying to get our breath back here after another thriller in its own way there was a lot of infighting in it Holyfield looking sharp early on winning the first round then Bo rather taking control with his inside work and the the right uppercuts then he had the point deducted Bo then he was on the floor in round six there couldn't have been an awful lot in it at that point Holyfield had a decent seventh round in the eighth round Bo knocks him out in the fashion you've just seen and they'll talk about this three fight series for a long time it will go down in heavyweight history I'm sure they will and it's remarkable how each fight has been so different from the previous one we had that tremendous stand-up battle of the first one when when Bo did everything right and won the fight then Holyfield changed tactics boxed in and out and did a remarkable job in, in beating Bo and then this one where they both stood toe to toe a tremendous fight has Holyfield got to quit now I think he I think he should don't you I mean, I he's think, made 90 million dollars I think certainly he should so let's go to Paul Dempsey uh, back in London. Thanks to Glenn and to Ian Dark. Different sort of drama, as Ian said, but nonetheless compelling. When we come back, we'll get the big fight verdict of Barry McGuigan and Gary Mason. We also hope to get some sort of reaction from ringside. Lots to come. Riddick Bowe has made it two victories to one in his favour in the rivalry over the 1990s with Evander Holyfield, but it was a fine, close-run thing, and Holyfield had his moments of glory snatched away from him in a dramatic fight. Maybe it didn't reach the quality of previous fights overall, Barry, but we couldn't ask for more in terms of drama, could we? Well, well for, for, for sure, uh, sheer power, strength and commitment. In the rubber matches in all these huge fights are never quite the same commitment as the earlier ones, but this was incredible. I mean, these guys fought their heart out and, I, you know, it looked like it could go anywhere at that, uh, at that stage. At the start of the eighth round, it was anybody's fight. The two of them were very tired. Bo Holyfield looked like he had him in trouble and then all of a sudden he walked onto a, an enormous right hook and his mouth was open and he got hit square on the chin and really he never got over that. We'll look at the uh, action at yes. the key moments in just a second. Gary Mason, your overall reading of it? I think it was um, Evander Holyfield, for some reason or another, he doesn't seem to be able to um, 
carry himself in the way he used to be able to in the ring because he, he seemed to have lost the plot after about three or four rounds but he was courageous enough to find a big punch in the later round which decked Riddick bro and after doing so he still didn't have nothing there to be able to go after him mm -hmm. and Riddick bro having the courage that he's got given the opportunity after being decked before he took his chances in the later rounds and he dropped Ivan Dolefield. It was a classic fight and a great display of courage by both fighters. Let's have a look at what happened in round six, Barry, when we began to see the fight slipping away from Holyfield. Well, Holyfield looked like it was starting to fall away from him and, and then all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden, he produced a left hook like, like this. What do you see? Absolutely incredible. He, he was a superb shot. Missed with the first one, but uh, he didn't miss with the second one. The right hand missed again. But the left hook finish up was whack right at square on the chin, and that was a superb shot. And let me tell you something: Riddick Bow has got a concrete chin, a chin of iron. But this left hook would have knocked over a horse. Absolutely incredible. Right. Missed him with the right hand and left hook, bang. And the other, he knocked him down, knocked him completely back and down to the ground. Superb shot. But uh, absolutely remarkable the way he was able to, the way he was able to to land that shot when it looked like he was all out. Look at that for a shot. Mm -hmm. Absolutely remarkable. Gary, was the suggestion for you that Bo would not get up? I believe that Bo looked very, very distressed and he didn't look as if he was going to actually get up from that. And when he did actually get up, he went to the corner and he stayed in the corner and he, he was riveted there. He couldn't actually move. But if the Holofield he seemed to be just riveted in front of him, wasn't able to capitalise on that, whether it was because there was something wrong with him physically, mm -hmm. that he couldn't just push his body. He seemed as if he couldn't push his body, but he allowed Riddick Bow to survive that. And when you're in there with two great fighters, if you put one down and you let him get away, he has got to get revenge, hasn't he, in the next round or a round later? Yes, that's Absolutely. A... Mm -hmm. And he did, uh, he couldn't, he couldn't finish it. Bow, he was exhausted. And then uh, this is round eight, and he heard him again here, and it looked like he had him in trouble. Uh, you know, it looked very much like it was a similar situation to the sixth, and and uh, he again forced him back to the ropes, ran in after him, rushed in after him again, a little bit ragged, left his chin hanging open, and whack, that right hand hit him, and he hit him as he was walking forward, and it was a combined total of about 30 stone hitting him on the chin, and you know, he, he just wasn't able to get up from that, and you know, he the, the referee, allowed him to get to his feet. He, it, I don't know how, it's just his courage that got him up from that one. He, you know, he's such he's a lion heart. He mm -hmm. was unbelievably courageous in this fight. And, you know, he'd done it time and time again, and he just showed he was tired here. And look at the referee, Joe Cortez. He has a look at him here. Now, the guy is out on his feet, and he's so brave, and he asks him to walk forward, and he won't walk forward, because he knows his legs will betray him. Yet, he allows him to continue. He takes a was step Was he right forward. to do that? Uh, well, it's very difficult because he's been such a proud champion in the past that, you know, he was right to allow him one more last-ditch effort. But at this level? At this level and, you know, at, at that stage in his career and, you know, knowing how much it meant to him, he had to give him the opportunity to go on. But the, the, the knockdown again, as I say, it was, he was hit full-blooded with a full-blooded punch here. He hit a right hand and a left hook. And he missed with the next one, and he tried again to walk in and uh, hold on, but he was gone at that stage, wasn't he, Gary? Was that quality work from, from Bo for you, Gary Mason? I think it was Bo having these physical advantages help him. Do you know, in the early in the build-up, they were talking about Evander Holyfield getting too brave and in the exchanges, and here we see the exchange, Evander Holyfield caught him, and they're actually having the exchange. Evander Holyfield's now forgotten a bit of ball he gets caught. Yeah. And that was what he said and everybody else said that could be his mistake. Mm. And it, it's proven to be the mistake. One more look at it here. Yeah, too brave for his own good. You know, he... Uh, and this is the final knockdown. He was, he was out on his feet there. You know, the referee, given the benefit of the doubt, but was very quick in stopping it now. And we're glad to see that he's made a complete recovery and he's OK, but his pride has been severely dented. How did you score it to that point, Gary, first? I had it roughly even at that stage. It was actually anybody's fight up until then. I had it All at right. the end of the seventh round, 66-66, dead even. That close. Let's get back to ringside and let's get a word with the winner and uh, the man with big things down the pipeline now, surely, Riddick Bow. Riddick, how did you summit the strength to come back when you did? 
Well, when the van got me down, I knew that it had to look very awkward to me, you know, looking up at him. I mean, man, I know I was supposed to be down here, so when I got up, I said, well, I got to maintain my composure and eventually things that, you know, come to my favor. Did you think you were one punch away from being knocked out? Oh, no, no, no. He shook me. I'm no question about it. Knocked me down. But I knew that I was much stronger than Evander, so he was throwing shots. I was catching him or whatever. My first time being down. And I'm, I knew eventually, you know, if I was cool and collective, I would get him. When you were dropped in the sixth, were you able to was clear that yourself? Sixth, that was the sixth. No kidding. Were you yeah. able to clear yourself at that point? Oh, yeah. I was able to clear myself, maintain my composure, and, and get back with using the jab and going to him and things of that nature. I just didn't want him to get momentum going well. He would come forward and just, you know, do everything, you know, in his power. So I had to keep him going back. Even though I was still shook up a little bit, I had to force him back, and that's what I did. And I got an opportunity to rest during the rounds, and uh, once the bell rang, I was okay again. How tough was the fight? It was extremely tough. Actually, to be quite honest with you, this was one of the, this was probably the hardest fight of all three. Because he was, I mean, I don't know what he had or what he was drinking or whatever, but um, he was extremely strong, and I don't know why. I couldn't figure it out. Maybe it was the weights he was lifting and whatnot, but he was much stronger for this fight than any other the previous two. Would you ever want to fight this guy again? Well, if he want to fight again, he got to do this by himself. I mean, um, he's, I mean, I, I believe that he could beat anybody out there other than myself. Like I said, I feel like he's number two in the world, and um, if he's trained like he trained for me, anybody else he would beat. What's your future all about now? Well, right now, in all honesty, I'm going home. We're going to celebrate the holidays and things of that nature. I've been going for two two months. When I left home, my baby was three months, now she's three months. So I'm just going to go home and enjoy. And then the first year, we're thinking about something. Well done, champ. Thanks a lot. What did you think of his performance tonight overall, Barry? I thought his performance was very shabby. I thought he started off reasonably well. Didn't look like he had the appetite for a tough fight. Um, looked apprehensive on a number of occasions. Had Holyfield in trouble and then all of a sudden uh, got nailed and showed signs of vulnerability for the first time ever. He said in the interview that he backed, when he was hurt and in trouble, he backed Holyfield up. He must have had a temporary lapse of, of memory because he was backed up and he sat in the corner and because Evander had nothing left and was exhausted himself, he wasn't able to pull off a surprise win. But uh, overall performance was, uh, uh, you know, I suppose in, in light of what has happened, uh, I'm a Vander Holyfield mm. fan. I, I have to put my cards on the table here. But I wasn't that impressed with Bo. Gary? I believe that Bo was um, very fortunate tonight to get away. And if it had been somebody like Lennox Lewis or another one in there, it would have been totally different. And I look forward to that match. How do you see that one, should it take place? Lennox Lewis will... I put my hand on my heart again. Lennox Lewis will knock him out. But did you notice at the end when I asked about his future, he avoided any mention of it because the first person he should have spoke about was Lennox Lewis. Mm -hmm. But he spoke about his holiday. He doesn't. He knows he doesn't need that. Barry, uh, I, I believe in in the interview beforehand with Rock Newman and uh, the subsequent in interview with with Bo afterwards, there was no mention of Lennox Lewis. Um, I don't believe he wants to fight Lewis. I think he'd rather fight Tyson than fight Lewis because that, as far as he's concerned, would be a safer bet. And uh, um, I think they're using money as a way of, of, uh, of avoiding, you know, they said he has to understand that, you know, we're the champion and, and we'll get most of the money. That's a nice way of saying, no, thank you, man. Mm -hmm. Have we seen Evander Holyfield in competitive action for the last time, Gary? I hope so. And because he deteriorated very badly after two or three rounds, and worryingly badly, and in comparison to the sort of fight that we know. So I hope he can call it a day with that performance. I, I, I really know. hope that, that he does because, you know, he cannot keep fighting fights like that and war after war after war. It's just your body says no after a while, and I'm afraid it said no tonight when he got nailed with that right hand. You know, that would have knocked out any heavyweight, and he just wasn't able to continue. We will continue ringside on the road next week. Just before we leave you, a reminder of the programme for November. We're in uh, the York Hall Bethnal Green on Wednesday evening. Join us at 7.30 for Chris Oko against Paul Lawson for the Commonwealth Cruiserweight title. It's on then to Derby on Friday evening for Neville Brown against Sean Cummins, the British middleweight title. Good division in Britain now. 8.30 it starts. There's a ringside special the following Wednesday, the 22nd of November at 8. It's Pernell Whittaker against Jake Rodriguez for the WBC World Welterweight title. More live action on the 24th of November. Crawford Ashley against Morris Corr in Manchester for the British Light Heavyweights title. We start at 9 that night. And big time boxing to end November from the Point Depot in Dublin. Steve Collins defending his WBO World Super Middleweight title against Cornelius Carr. 
One more reminder, the 28th of November, the British cruiserweight fight Terry Dunstan against Dennis Andrees. This is a rematch. There's a lot at stake for both men. That's the York Hall Bethel Green once more, and we start at 8 that evening. A dramatic conclusion to a dramatic trilogy and a great rivalry of the 1990s. Riddick Bowe leads Evander Holyfield 2-1. It would probably be better for all sides if they call a halt there. The big daddy just gets the better of the real deal. But we will never forget Holyfield's bravery. From the whole team, good night.